I just wrote down some notes here, uh, <coughs> kind of an outline of the uh, chronological about how this thing developed, and mm -hmm. I suppose, presume that's about what you wanted. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've been, what we have been doing on the late, on the uh, on the tapes is trying to get a chronological uh, history of the people themselves mm -hmm. as to where uh, from where they came mm -hmm. and uh, if they were or were not natives of Oklahoma. And uh, when they came to Oklahoma City and mm -hmm. so forth. Are you a native of Oklahoma City? Yes, I'm yeah. a native of Oklahoma City. Of Oklahoma City? Uh, Oklahoma. Of Oklahoma. Yeah, I, I went to school there in Oklahoma State. Oklahoma and m and Where are you born? Oklahoma. Uh, what town? Minko. About uh, 30, Minko, yeah. 35 uh -huh. miles from here. Went to uh, Oklahoma A&M? Yeah. And when did you move into Oklahoma City? Well, 35. In 35. Uh -huh. The... Uh, uh, what were you taking at Oklahoma A and M? The mechanical engineering. I uh, taught up there for five years after I graduated, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way I got in contact with this parking meter thing. Yeah, uh, that's uh, being the uh, first one, and also. Uh, starting an entirely new industry that no one knew anything about. As a matter of fact, mm. uh, I think it was during our conversation with Alan Street, former mayor, that mm. he brought it up and got into it quite a bit, and he was talking about a different aspect of it. Yeah. But perhaps we can reach back in those, uh, in those days and find out uh, a little more precisely about this uh, item that turned out to be worldwide mm. and originated right here in yeah, Oklahoma right. City. <coughs> who got the idea for this? Well, Carl McGee. Carl and McGee, uh, who was a... Uh, he was a newspaper editor, the Oklahoma News, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was about, uh, I guess about 33 or 34, when uh, he was serving on a committee appointed by the Chamber of Commerce to figure out some solution to the parking problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, he... Uh, conceived the idea of a clock, what they needed was a clock to uh, time the car as it was parked at the curb. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I wonder if we're going to have to shut that dog off. <laughs> well, he's going to drag that little... to the background. Uh, he probably won't bother. Uh, the, uh, then, he can, then, he, then he saw the idea of using a coin in other words, you to have some economic deterrent against receiving. Otherwise, if you're just a timer at your space mm -hmm. uh, and no uh, coin involved, of course, people go back and set it up again. Uh -huh. But with a coin, you had some economic deterrent there to uh, prevent people from receiving too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, after getting that idea, he came to Oklahoma State and uh, he, he had the idea that... Uh, could have a student contest uh, to work on designs, and he put up $500 prize money, I think, and uh, for the best design, and uh, they worked on that, I guess, several months, and uh, as would be expected with students, you didn't get too much of any value, mm -hmm. but H.G. Uh, Thurston, who was also one of the professors, and myself kind of got interested in it during that interval. So we decided to go ahead and, and work on it and see if we couldn't come up with something. And we worked about a year <coughs> on the design of the initial meter. And uh, in 1934 and the beginning of 1935, uh, we made arrangements for a company in Tulsa to manufacture. This McNick company had had some experience with clockwork. and. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they <coughs> they were contracted with by Mr. McGee to make the meter, and he or Mr. McGee organized the company here in Oklahoma City and sold stock to people in town to finance it, and that was the beginning of the uh, uh, of the meter. That's the way it got started. Mm -hmm. Well, as of necessity, the, the prototype was rather uh, uh, crude, I suspect, wasn't it? Well, uh, yes, it was. It naturally uh, wasn't uh, 
as opposed to the finished product yeah. today or even two yeah. or three well, years there, later. Well, there were there several different models built. Mm -hmm. And the uh, fact is some of the students worked on the composite model of what they would proposed, and Thus and I worked on a couple of models, and then the manufacturers, of course, improved that some. And uh, they came up with the initial meter that was built and installed here in Oklahoma City in uh, 1935, July. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. McGee uh, didn't much want to try the thing out here, however, they insisted that he uh, use Oklahoma City as a trial for the thing, and uh, he sold the meter to them at about $35. The price was around $50 at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put in uh, 150. And uh, this is July of 35. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, they put them in every other space, so let's get a comparison of the conditions with meters and without. Yeah, right. <laughs> on Main Street, I think, yeah. one, maybe one or two side streets. And the result was really phenomenal. It, uh, that before you come down down in the morning, it'd be full of cars. It'd uh, be space was all full. There wasn't anybody moving much, circulating much. But uh, on the first morning with the meters, on that on the metered side, there wasn't any cars at all. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it was the usual congestion. And uh, they were a little bit worried at first, afraid maybe they weren't going to use the meter. But first thing you know, they began uh, coming into the spaces since the others filled up, of course, and uh, moving in and out and doing business. And uh, so it proved out right from the first that it was a pretty good idea to keep the uh, traffic moving. Mm -hmm. a good, good method. You say McGee uh, was a little hesitant about selling it to the Oklahoma City. What well, he was ethical. Uh, mm -hmm. he, was, he was a very ethical man, and uh, he felt like that uh, somebody would say, well, he was promoting something on Oklahoma City property, or, mm -hmm. and <coughs> of course, that wasn't true, but then he didn't want anybody to say that he was uh, receiving a favorite treatment, in effect, from the city. Uh -huh. <coughs> but they soon talked him out of that, and, of course, uh, Santa Draper was quite influential in uh, the uh, in trying it and getting it tested and everything. I should imagine there was quite a public reaction, wasn't there? Yes, uh, there, there was. In fact, uh, after this 150 were tried out, then they went right ahead and installed 500 units, mm -hmm. which covered pretty well the whole down down area. Were they manufactured here? No, they are made in Tulsa. They were manufactured in Tulsa. That's right. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anybody in Oklahoma City at that time that was capable of making the meter. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was only one company, I guess, in, in, that was in Tulsa that was, had the facilities and the, pra and the background to do that kind of work. It was a, it was a combination of a coin-operated machine and a timing device. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the timing device, uh, although you could buy a timing device, it's, uh, it, uh, it really took a special unit to function properly with the meter. Did they try one type or did they have several types? No, the, we see this is the first meter ever built and, uh, uh -huh. and there's only one type. And it, was a, it, was a, it was a nickel only. In other words, it was a single coin meter. Of course, what? now they have the multiple coin uh -huh. and we're accustomed to that. We think all meters were that way, but in the beginning, uh, they were only single coin meter. For how long a time? Well, that lasted for several years before they... I mean, the, the length of time, half hour, an hour. Well, it would depend. Uh, so on the, in, say, in the main area, you might have some half hour spaces. Mm -hmm. And then you get out a little further, you'll have one hour spaces and mm -hmm. maybe an hour and a half, two hours. In other words, different areas, different time limits. What do the meters look like? I mean, they're quite dissimilar from the ones today, I suspect. Well, it it looked about the same. Uh, our first meter had the uh, housing for the mechanism and the signal at the top and the coin slot on the side. But the money compartment, instead of being in the lower part of the case, was down in the pipe. Mm -hmm. and in other words, they had a tube that dropped in the pipe and the, where the money was accumulated. Mm -hmm. 
I know it just wasn't a bad idea, except that uh, it was a little hard to get to. You had to upset the head, uh, hinge the head on the post, you see, uh -huh. and uh, so you could unlock it and get your money out. <laughs> What other facts do you have that uh, perhaps uh, you've noted there? Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I'd say this, that uh, with the first installation, there was a lot of interest over the country uh, stimulated, and uh, people came here and was inquiring about the meters. And it wasn't long until we made installations in Dallas and El Paso and began to spread out mm -hmm. and uh, place the meters in uh, other cities. And, of course, uh, with the meters operating, uh, other people saw them, and some people got interested in making a meter of their own. That is, they wanted to go into business. You know, you, you never get anything that's good to what uh, there'll be other people entering the field until it's uh, pretty well saturated. So there were other companies that introduced meters say, a year or so after we first came into the business. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything that you'd get a patent on because you can get a patent on a way to build a meter, but you can't get a patent on the idea of using a meter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there were other makes that within about a year and a half had come into the market. Well, the first company made them was in Tulsa, right? That's right. <coughs> now, they were they contract manufactured for the uh, Parker Meter Company <coughs> here in Oklahoma City. The home office, of course, of our business was here in Oklahoma City. Was this name patented in <coughs> Parker Meter? Yes, that was the, uh, the trade name, Parker Meter was. Mm -hmm. You don't get a patent, you get a trade name. Trade name. Mm -hmm. In uh, seven years' time, we installed 70,000 meters, uh, and uh, they were well scattered over the United States. And then the war came along, and of course they uh, shut down on all non-essential items mm -hmm. and uh, put a prohibition against making meters until the war was over. Well, uh, actually. We had, uh, this was the first model we had built, and uh, we realized that uh, there's many improvements that could be made in it, and uh, out of the experience we'd had with it. So during the shutdown period, I uh, took care of the service to the cities on the meters we had installed, and then I also worked on the design of a complete new meter. And uh, <coughs> it was uh <coughs> based on the experience that we'd had. <coughs> It was, uh, and it was an automatic meter, that is, it, uh, we did away with the external handle, and uh, it was made to operate on all the common coins, pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters, and we provided that you would give any amount of time that you chose for that, for those coins, for instance, you'd nickel for an hour or nickel for a half hour. Dime, of course, would be twice as much as a nickel and a quarter five times as much, or pennies could be used with a fifth as much time as a nickel, you see. Mm -hmm. And it was made adjustable, so you could uh, adjust it on the street, and it could operate for any time limit up to <coughs> uh, a few minutes, tw 15 to 20 minutes, up to all day, or even uh, longer than that, if you mm -hmm. wanted to. And we uh, began using them on parking lots, you know, where they would, it were po was possible to set the meters for all day, if you wanted. Mm -hmm. When uh, when they when they we started again uh, with this complete new meter, uh, we were the only ones that had a complete new design to start with. Now some of the other companies that had been in the business uh, mm -hmm. still had their old models. We had the only modern meter, so the business uh, grew at a very good pace and. Uh, at the end of 1961, we had about 15,000 cities in the United States, Canada, and Europe, mm. or with a total of 700,000 meters in service. Uh, we licensed a manufacturer in Canada and also one in Europe.
to the next one over there to say, you know, paying the duty. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so they've manufactured them on the specifications. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now that's <coughs> what I've got down here. And that's about the whole story, I guess. Uh, Well, it's, it's really a marvelous story. It's uh, even, there are probably many facets to it that uh, you will think of or maybe someone else will think mm -hmm. of as you go along, but uh, to have uh, something grow out of uh, not only an idea, but a great deal of work mm -hmm. that went into it, but mm -hmm. primarily there had to be an idea. I can recall the old cranks. That yeah, used to be on yeah well, the first ones had the cranks on. Uh -huh. That was to to activate the timing device. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, you got your energy by putting it in as you inserted the coin. Mm -hmm. But the uh, automatic meter, of course, you had to wind those. But uh, one winding would operate for a week or two, mm -hmm. and uh, you would do that winding operation as you made the collection. You also had to go to the meter to make the collection anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to energize them at that time. And that got away from this problem of some people putting in money and then they'd turn the handle part way, you know, and leave it cocked. and mm -hmm. Or not turn it at all, wait for the officer to come along and check a meter, and when he'd turn the handle, whether it would put the time on, mm -hmm. starting at that particular instant. I suspect you had a lot of people come here to look at these meters from various other cities. Didn't yes, we, we did. They came here from... Uh, quite a few cities, <coughs> and uh, in fact, uh, they had a lot of publicity in the beginning. It was an interesting idea. Uh -huh. uh, pro and con on the publicity, yes. too. Huh? Well, that's right. It, it, was always, uh, it was always a lot of people that uh, were not for the meters. They were, it was a controversial subject. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't think we ever made an installation, but what they were just about as many people against them as they were for them, at least in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because people generally, and they don't know much about how a thing works or what it does, uh, they will, they're against it. And uh, but after they were in, and after they used them a week or two, uh, they they were for them because they found that they did provide parking where formerly they couldn't park at all. The uh, congestion, of, you know the regulation without uh, anything, but police officers trying to protect cars parked, it was no good, and then the spaces were full, and, the, and uh, the person that got in there first generally stayed as all day or as long as he wanted to. Yeah, I must admit that there have been times in uh, small towns back in Ohio, and uh, particularly in Ohio, that I'd run out mm -hmm. and uh, wipe that blue chalk mark off the tire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ohio was a good state for a meter. We sold a lot of meters in Ohio. It was one of the best uh, areas we had. For I remember meters. Bell Fountain, Ohio. I was raised in Bell right? Fountain, Ohio, uh -huh. when the meters went in there. Yeah. I've, I've forgotten whether we put them in there or not. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember the trade name on them. But uh, I, I remember, I believe that, uh, well, I remember the Bell Fountain, all right, uh, but I don't remember whether our meters or not there. We had them in Cleveland. That was one of the early installations. I think they put in 3,000 meters, <coughs> which was a good number at that time. <coughs> New York City, uh, they've got 350,000, which I guess is the largest inflation in the world. Pretty good size. Mm. You mentioned something about the, uh, the parking lot meters. I don't think I've ever seen those. Do you make those? At <coughs> yes, they, uh, they don't use them here in Oklahoma City, uh, it's uh, for use on municipally operated off-street lots, and uh, here in Oklahoma, it doesn't seem like the idea of a municipally operated lot is uh, taken hold, but in lots of uh, the country, it is quite common where the municipality will operate lots, mm -hmm. and uh, then they'll operate these lots with meters just like the street. system of enforcement is used it's on the street. But, uh, generally, a lot meter will operate for longer limits. Of course, you take a, a 
smaller lot in, say, in a congested area, you may limit it to two hours, just like you do the speed meter. Mm -hmm. And uh, then out uh, maybe a block away from the business area, you may let them park five hours, or you might let them park ten hours. Mm -hmm. The idea, of course, of the municipality furnishing lots is simply to augment the street space where the streets are not adequate, which they are not. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they extend that uh, limited time parking. It's not a, uh, meters are never used for storage parking. That is, the main use of meters is not for storage. Mm -hmm. Like putting your car in the garage or something like that. Of course, we did uh, sell some meters where they uh, tried them on the storage lots where they park all day or even two or three days if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was a very small part of the business. Well, for our, what uh, type of coins would, say, a five-hour take? Well, it'd be, say, a quarter for five hours. Uh-huh. Or it, it might be a ten-hour meter, and it'd be a quarter. Uh -huh. you, you might have ten hours for a quarter. Back in those days, of course, uh, the value of the coin was not as great as it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, on an off-street area, they quite commonly would have a quarter if it was uh, for ten hours, if it was out of... I'd say two or three blocks from the main area. Mm -hmm. now, if it was a well-located lot, uh, maybe not too large, they might uh, make a nickel an hour just like on the street. And on the street meters, sometimes they charge a nickel, you know, for 30 minutes and a nickel for even 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Depends all, uh, all together on the value of the space and uh, how much demand the space is. The, co the charge uh, actually makes... Uh, an economic deterrent against abuse of the parking privilege. You can uh, regulate, uh, to some extent, the parking by amount you charge for it. Mm -hmm. Did you start out on the basis of selling the meters, or was it? <coughs> uh, always uh, they were sold. Always a direct yes. sale. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were paid for out of the revenue, and mm -hmm. out of generally half the revenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way the city had uh, re income from meters without any cost from the very beginning. And uh, when they were paid for, of course, they had all the revenue. And it, it would take about uh, a year to pay for the meters out of half the revenue. They sold for 50 or $60. Each. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, in large quantities, why they'd sell for uh, scale down to yeah. within well on a bulk basis. Yeah, like uh, New York City buying meters for thirty, forty, fifty thousand of them. Why naturally they could buy them a lot cheaper than you could sell a two or three hundred to a small city. How many do we have in Oklahoma City now, roughly? I'd say about three thousand. About three thousand. Mm -hmm. We put in uh, five hundred here on the initial installation. But uh, they, they have they're scattered now pretty well all over town. It might be less than that because they've taken off quite a few downtown mm -hmm. where they have no parking at all. But I guess they've got between two, fi two five, and three Oklahoma City. Well, how's business today? Well, of course, I'm out of the parking mm -hmm. business. Uh, the uh, I would say the business is... Uh, sort of stagnant, uh, the, uh, well, well, most of your growth in uh, your parking areas is in the shopping centers now instead of uh, in downtown areas. In fact, uh, they're using the downtown area less mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for parking. Uh, that is, uh, they're more restrictive and they build garages. And in other words, they use most of the downtown area now for moving traffic rather than for parking. Mm -hmm which has sort of limited the uh, use of meters, uh, except maybe in smaller places. <coughs> and uh, It would seem, though, that uh, one of these days, some of these... Uh, or at least one of these uh, <coughs> shopping centers is going to try it. Well, that's the only thing. If it gets to the point where a shopping center 
is uh, so crowded uh, that they need to regulate the parking, uh, then they, they might put in meters. But if the shopping center is properly designed, I don't know that it'll ever come because they are supposed to provide enough parking area that uh, they can take care of as many cars as need to, as will ever be doing business there. Mm -hmm. that, that's the theory of it. And uh, on that basis, there'd always be plenty of parking space in a, in a shopping center. Uh, if you're going to get that much business, you'll build another shopping center on down the roadway. <laughs> <laughs> well, parking so, has become the, the prime uh, requirement. That's right. It's the prime. Uh, in other words, people are used to using their cars to go do business, and uh, mm -hmm. that's the reason the shopping center is so, so successful. It has mm -hmm. adequate parking, and convenient parking, and uh, I guess that's the biggest... Uh, retail development now in Oklahoma City and other cities, and that is the development of off-street parking and shopping centers. Well, the increase in population, and the increase, increase in, in cars. Yeah, the increase in population is uh, being taken care of, though, by shopping centers. Mm -hmm. And the downtown area, actually, is uh, mostly industrial and banking, things of that kind. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and you see the stores moving out of downtown, and they'll be long, all of them be moved out uh, in the shopping area. So... Uh, while it'll, it might come that uh, they'll take parking off the street entirely. I don't know how this new pie plan works, and they've got it all mapped out, you know, for the downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, whether they plan on having uh, parking on the street or off street. Mostly off street parking, as yeah, I recall. I, I think so. I think that's right. I think everything is planned off street, so that means that no meters will be used mm -hmm. uh, much in the town. So I would say the business is uh, pretty much constant, and uh, it's a replacement and uh, not too much growth. Mm -hmm. Now, we sold the business to uh, Rockwell, and uh, there they have a company in Tulsa, and they also make a meter in Tulsa. They, they did make a meter even before we uh, sold them our meter, and they discontinued the meter they had, and they're now making our meter. And there's two or three other companies, <coughs> I guess, that are fairly active, but uh, I, I would say the business has been somewhat uh, a grading downward as far as volume is concerned. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the big business was saturating the market, and then after that came, why well, it began to kind of taper off. Well, you were fortunate. You people had a running start. <coughs> yeah, we were the first ones in it, and we had the uh, the cream of the business. Mm -hmm. That is, we got uh, we got all we needed, and uh, there was, uh, I guess, as many as ten other companies. But I would say there's about three companies that actually were prominent in the in the business beside yourself. The co the Rockwell Company in Tulsa was about uh, third, I think, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the Chicago company, it was, I guess, they, were, they probably did more business than we did in the ultimate of the thing. Mm -hmm. But in the post-war, when you came out with the new model, I imagine it was grabbed pretty quickly, wasn't it? Yeah, so a lot, <coughs> we had, a, well, it was for five or six years there, uh, we had uh, all, uh, almost... Uh, free run on the business. In fact, if we could have made more meters, we'd have sold them. Our mm -hmm. whole, uh, you know, after the war, it was difficult to get material. Yeah. And the fact you could just produce so many, and that was all, and that was what we were limited by, is how many we could make. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a case of uh, what you could sell, but what you could produce. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but the company in uh, Chicago, I guess they, they uh, were better able to get material uh, being in a location like that, you know, and uh, uh -huh. so they did have, that's one advantage they had, is they, they had facilities to turn them out uh, if they could sell them, and that was one reason they probably sold more than we did. The company in Tulsa uh, wasn't a very big company, uh, but the parking meter business did make them, uh, that is, it, uh, they, they made their uh, whatever money they did make off the parking meters, mostly. Of course, the other business uh, didn't not too much. Well, 
Well, it's certainly it's quite a history of, or one segment of the history of Oklahoma City. There's, there have been so many interesting things happening. <clears throat> and as I've talked uh, uh, on this project of the colleges, I've talked to so many people, and each one has contributed a particular portion. And, mm -hmm. uh, there are any number of firsts from around this city. Yes, well, that's the park meter was first here. It was mm -hmm. uh, originated here. I don't suppose that as many people realize that uh, that is away from here, but then uh, this is where it started. And it was about a year, I guess, uh, before the competition got into the field, and then the competition wasn't too strong. In fact, the business was uh, really slower than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it wasn't uh, a thing that they come and took away from you. You had to sell it. <laughs> and uh, so it was it was a rather slow business for the first few years. I can recall, uh, and I have, uh, as you mentioned also, the objections of various uh, segments of people in a community to the yeah, parking meter and, right. and the controversies that were in those days of the pro and con in the newspapers. Why should That's we right. have to pay for parking meters right. that we haven't paid for before? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. They, they uh, in other words, if, unless it was sold, uh, they would never go for it. In right. other words, they, they say, well, why should we have to pay for something? It's just as you say. Uh -huh. And uh, but you, you had to, you had to sell them, and it took quite a while to convince them that uh, what we had was a good thing. Yeah, I, uh, but, uh, I suspect that on that selling uh, tour, meeting with the various uh, communities and the people in the communities, city fathers and whatever form of city government they had. It was rather difficult, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You had to first sell the city officials, mm -hmm. and of course, sometimes you sold the merchants too at the same time. But you had to put on a whole a regular campaign almost to uh, mm -hmm. convince them that it was a good thing. Were you so, out on some of those campaigns? Oh, yes. I worked on sales and, uh, to some extent. And, mm -hmm. But uh, I, that is, I helped some. I, of course, the salesman in the area would take care of that. Uh, I used to go out quite a bit and help on that phase of it, and we'd even put the meters in on trial. You know, put on, uh, put in a, a block, uh, two or three blocks, mm -hmm. and let them try them out that way to determine whether or not they they liked them. But in, there, in no case did they ever come out. <laughs> well, that was happy. Uh -huh. <laughs> now they did. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, meters haven't been removed. Of course, in later years there were some removed. Mm -hmm. uh, some places they over, overdid it, and uh, and other places uh, they made probably business fell off for some particular reason, and they took them out in certain towns. Now that uh, that's a very unusual thing. They're uh, a very profitable thing for the city. It doesn't, uh, actually, the uh, work of taking the money out is about the major portion. The, the service on them is not a great deal. Uh -huh. And uh, surprisingly, you, you've got uh, three elements in a meter. You've got, a, you've got three components in one unit. You've got a coin-operated machine. You've got a timing device, which is rather delicate uh, by its nature. And it has to be an escape timing device because you have no electrical current to operate it, and you've got a signal system. And uh, yet, they operate uh, very reliably. Uh, the ones today, do you still have to wind them? Yes, if they're automatic, you have to wind them. That mm -hmm. is, the fellow that collects the money does the energizing the meter at mm -hmm. the same time. And that saves the public having to do that each time he puts a coin in. <coughs> uh, for instance, you might put in two or three pennies, or a nickel in two or three pennies. Each time you have to crank it up. And uh, by making it automatic, by one winding at the time you make the collections, you save all that work on the part of the public. And probably but, saves a lot on repair, too. Yes, and that's right. He saves on repairs. And uh, another thing, a person sometimes will uh, not set the meter, you drop the money in and not turn the handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning days, that was a very common thing. <laughs> and uh, 
you the officer come along and check the meter and turn the handle and it would uh, and it would set itself because the coin was laying in there dormant you see mm -hmm. and so that was the reason we conceived of the idea of making it automatic is to eliminate that that uh, factor the first designs we built were manual majors that is manually operated mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we decided to make the automatic instead of the the manual Was there a hue and cry on, from the uh, opposing ideas of people here? There was some, <coughs> but uh, not as much here as it was some other places. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, the way they did it, I think, uh, eliminated that. I think if they'd have put in a, a big installation uh, all at one time, there'd have been a lot of opposition to it. But mm -hmm. uh, what they did, they only put in 150 units, and they spaced those every other meter, you see, mm -hmm. every other space. So that wasn't enough to hurt anybody, regardless of what you thought about it. Mm -hmm. And you had your choice when you parked. You could park in the metered space or the unmetered space. And uh, mm -hmm. so you had a good uh, good comparison there. And uh, How about the merchant's reaction? Well, the merchants, of course, they were against it, I think, at the start. Uh, they didn't think it was, you know, this thing had to be proven, and the only way you could prove it was by <laughs> demonstrating what it would do. Yeah, on and the that, job. Huh? Yeah, and that was what Mr. McGee did. He, he really stuck his neck out because they had to tool up completely, and uh, then he put in 500, 150, I guess it was, here on, the, on a free trial. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, to prove to them that it was good. Now, he, he had analyzed the thing in his mind that uh, all factors involved in it, and he was convinced that it was a good idea. And uh, yet the average individual uh, who wouldn't think it through would uh, immediately jump to the conclusion, well, the idea is no good. He's just going to charge us for, doing, <laughs> for parking when, when now we don't have to pay anything. That was the reaction they'd have when you'd mentioned it to them. And, uh, so it was a, it was recognized as as, a, as nothing but a trial and a test, and mm -hmm. if it didn't work, why well, they'd pull them out. How long did they try them? You recall? Oh, it wasn't, uh, but a few a few weeks, I think, about two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and they decided to go out ahead and put in full amount. It was five hundred, I think. Mm -hmm. They first first put in. I think they've got about two thousand now, maybe three thousand. But five hundred covered the main business area pretty well. I imagine making the mechanism for, uh, uh, we'll say for a foreign country, that was tax the ingenuity, wouldn't it, because of the coins? <coughs> yes, uh, it, uh, I don't know, we were able to work it out in nearly every case. I don't, I don't remember of any case where we weren't able to uh, work it out. Hmm by modifying some little thing in the meter where the coins were not the same size. I think, uh, as a general rule, the coins, uh, the value of the coin uh, is according to its size. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had in our meter the uh, possibility of using one smaller coin to uh, that had a higher value. For instance, the dime has twice as much value as the nickel, mm -hmm. and it's very small. So we, we used that. Uh, to take care of one smaller coin if that was in the, in the combination. Mm -hmm. So we was able to cover it nearly every case. Mm -hmm. It's uh, <coughs> a device that's out in the weather and uh, it's subject to every kind of public abuse. So you'd think it would uh, be a troublesome thing, but uh, on the whole, I think they worked very good. Of course, they have some mechanical trouble. <coughs> like there's nothing mechanical, you know, that doesn't get out of whack once in a while. <laughs> but it isn't very often. And the thing is, uh, the uh, person doing the collections or the service is always working on the meters. If there's anything wrong, why well, they immediately take care of it.
Well, the mechanism is somewhat simplified to a degree now, isn't it? <coughs> yes, well, it's, it's always been very simple, actually, considering what it does. It, as I say, it's a, you've got a coin-operated machine, and it's got to take four different coins mm -hmm. and uh, four different size coins, and uh, it's got to give time according to the value of each. Bill. That in itself is, you know, generally a pretty complicated problem. Mm -hmm. And you've got your timing device and you've got your signal system. You got your time. In other words, you've got a complete clock because you've got a dial there and a pointer to indicate uh, how long you've barked. That tells the fellow how long you've been barked. And you've got the signal that appears when the pointer runs down. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's anything else, I don't know whether we've got this so you can get uh, the thing. I was trying to think. Uh, get I it in shape. We've <coughs> I believe we covered just about uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to go over again? To, uh, if there's any of it needs to be clarified or anything of that kind. Uh, I don't think so. I think you did very yeah. well on that. It's amazing how the, what abuse some of these things take, too. Yes. You see people get angry, mm -hmm. kick them, whack at them, yeah. and everything else, yeah. and think they're going to come up and get a free hour, <laughs> another hour part. That's right. Yeah, they're right out there where they can. <coughs> they have to take it, and they have to operate in all kinds of weather. I sure do. What kind of so material do you use in that? Well, area? aluminum and brass and stainless steel. Mm -hmm. uh, three, uh, three high-grade materials. It has to be that too. It's, uh, if you use anything, if you use ordinary steel in that, it soon start. It'll start rusting in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I expect if you'd uh, had known all the troubles that you're going to get into <laughs> when we started, we probably never started it. But then <laughs> we uh, always worked out of all of them, so I guess it came out all right. Yeah. yeah. But that was one of the Mr. McGee's uh, brainchilds, and uh, as I say, he got the idea while working on a Chamber of Commerce Committee of what they could do about the parking problem here in Oklahoma City. I think he was chairman of the committee. And yeah, did, you, did he ever say that uh, where he got this idea or he just dreamed the thing up? He just come, I think he just dreamed it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the idea had ever been conceived of by anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there had been some patents on a on a device, but all of them involve some contact with the car, with the uh, apparatus. Mm -hmm. It was made for use uh, a parking lot, you know. And uh, this was the honor system, and they used a signal instead of any kind of attachment to the car. That was impractical, actually. Yeah. Be impractical almost to do that. Well, it's your work. Yes, it did. It, it worked, and uh, it's still working. I guess it's about uh, at the peak of its uh, uh, capacity. I don't know that there's much expansion in it. I think uh, the things last a long time. Uh, we had them there for 10 to 15 years in service, and uh, they don't seem like they ever take them out, although once in a while they take you can trade them out. <laughs> for, we traded out some of the first ones because we had uh, worked out improved models. But uh, they they seem to work pretty good. Well, it's an interesting and an important piece of history as it uh, applied to Oklahoma and uh, the reflection it has on the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Something that came out of here that's uh, still being used. Yeah, it's one of the fr few things, I guess, that actually you can say originated in Oklahoma City for sure. <laughs> and nowhere else. That's right, no place <laughs> else. It's used all over the world, all the civilized world. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany, and Japan, and uh. England, and Europe. Uh, the the, uh, the licensed manufacturer in England sells them in Europe. Mm 
but there are other companies now making them, I think, in, uh, in well, I know there is other companies making them in Europe. Germany is, a, is one or two German manufacturers, and I believe there's one in Japan. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that character's anxious out there. He doesn't yeah. want to be left out there, does he? <laughs>